Thank you very much. So I'm Masaki Yamada from Tokyo University. Today I will be talking about the present status of action theories and churches and ALP dark matter interpretation of the Zeno wanton excess. So, wait, okay. So this is the outline of this talk. So this, since this is the first talk in the action session, I will give an overview of the QCD action dark matter. Then in the second part of my talk, I will explain how the Zeno one to excess can be explained by an anomaly free LP dark matter. Interestingly, we can also explain the star cooling anomaly simultaneously in this model. So the axiom is introduced to solve the strong CP problem. So we can write, uh, we can write down this Lagrangian in the uh, standard model Lagrangian and uh, this parameter theta is a CP violating phase. <clears throat> And this term predicts a non-zero neutron EDM, but we have a strong upper bound on the neutron EDM. So we have a very stringent constraint on this parameter theta. And such a small parameter in the Lagrangian is a mystery known as the strong CP problem. But this smallness can be explained by the Petchaikian mechanism, where they introduce a anomalous global symmetry called the Petchaikian symmetry and breaks it spontaneously at an intermediate scale. Then this parameter theta is promoted to a dynamical field called an axion. This is a pseudo energy boson associated with the U1 Petrachi symmetry. So it has a very flat potential, but acquires a non acquires a, a effective potential due to the non the effect of QCD. So the axion acquires this kind of periodic potential after the QCD phase transition. So the axion then starts to oscillate around the potential minimum. And at this potential minimum, the effective theta parameter cancels. And we can explain the smallness of this uh, parameter. So this is the Petchaikov mechanism. And we, uh, this mechanism predicts a very light scalar field, an axion. So the axion potential is determined by the QCD scale and uh, its decay constant for the Petrachi symmetry breaking scale. And since we know the QCD scale, the axial mass is determined by its decay constant in this way. And interestingly, the coherent oscillation of axion behaves like matter in the universe. So the axion is a good candidate for dark matter. And there are two uh, uh, kinds of a, a UV completion model for the Petra Queen mechanism. So in the case of VZ axial model, these standard model particles do not have Petra Queen charges. And in the DFSZ model, the standard model particles have Petra Queen charges. So depending on the UV theory, the coupling between the axion and the standard model particles are slightly different. So since the axion can be dark matter, we'd like to calculate its radic abundance. Sorry. But its radic abundance depends on the cosmological scenarios. So suppose that the Petrachi symmetry is broken before inflation. This is called the pre-inflationary Petrachi symmetry breaking scenario. So in this case, the coherent, uh, coherent length of the axion field of value will be stretched by inflation. So the after inflation, we have a almost homogeneous uh, initial uh, field value for the axion. Then the, as the temperature decreases after inflation, the QCD phase transition occurs and the axion acquires this periodic potential. So then the axion starts to oscillate around the potential minimum. So the resulting uh, the energy density of this coherent oscillation is determined by its mass and its initial misalignment angle, theta i. So if we assume that the initial misalignment angle is of order unity, the axial mass should be about a micro electron volt to explain the observed dark matter density. So this is the case when the petri queen symmetry is broken before inflation, but uh, we can also think about the case where the petri queen symmetry is broken after inflation. For example, if the temp Reheating temperature after inflation is sufficiently high, the petri queen symmetry is restored by their uh, thermal effects. Then, there are, then there are the temperature decreases, the phase transition occurs, and the petri queen symmetry is spontaneously broken. But in this case, the axion field value 
will take a random value in the different causal patches. As a result, we get a topological defect called the cosmic strings after the phase transition in this way. And then as the temperature decreases, the QCD phase transition occurs, and then the each cosmic string will be attached by a domain wall. Okay. So the dynamics of this system depends on the uh, axial models. So for the KSVZ axial model, this system is unstable. So the cosmic string will shrink to a point due to the attention of the domain wall, and then they decay completely into axions. And those axions become non-relativistic soon after they are generated. So they can be called the dark matter in this scenario. Okay. So the resulting axion abundance can be calculated can, can be calculated by simulating this kind of system numerically. But such a numerical simulation is quite challenging because we have two different energy scales in this system. This one is of order 10 to 11 GB, and this one is of order 0.1 GB. So this kind of uh, numerical simulation is quite challenging. So the resulting axion abundance has a very large uncertainty. So <clears throat> according to our, our, our several papers, uh, it may be reasonable to say that the axial mass should be within this window to explain the observed dark matter density. But uh, according to the recent uh, state-of-the-art numerical simulation, the axial mass may be about a 25 micro electron volt to explain the observed dark matter density. So although this is not conclusive, but uh, uh, this is an uh, interesting parameter region to search for the axiom. And uh, this is the case for the KSBC axiom model. <clears throat> but if you think about the DFSC axiom model, the scenario is completely different. So in this case, each cosmic string will be attached by six domain walls. In this case, the cosmic string and domain wall system is quite stable and cannot completely decay into axions. So the resulting universe is highly inhomogeneous and is not consistent with our universe. So this is known as the domain world problem. So that in the DF, so the DFSD axial model cannot apply to the post inflationary Petrachek symmetry breaking scenario. So in this case, the Petrachek symmetry must be broken before inflation. So once we determine the uh, abundance of the axion, we can determine the uh, well motivated parameter space for the QCD axions, micro electron volt or uh, 25 micro electron volt or something like that. So then we should think about how to detect QCD axions by experiments. So actually the axion has a coupling to photons and the fermions in the standard sector via these operators. So we can search for the QCD axion by using these uh, interactions. And depending on the source of the axion, we can categorize the uh, axion search experiments in this way. So since the axion can be dark matter, we can search for the dark matter axions by these experiments and uh, observations. Or the axion can be generated inside the stellar objects like the sun. So the helioscope can search for the solar axions. And uh, uh, those experiments uh, will be uh, explained in detail in the uh, uh, later session, uh, in this session. So I will not explain these. So we should look, uh, we should listen to their talks. And here, let me exp briefly explain the helioscope, which can search for the axion via the axion photon coupling. <clears throat> So the axion photon coupling here can be rewritten in this way. So this shows that in the presence of the strong magnetic field, the axion can convert into a real photon. So this is known as the Primakov process. So the hieroscope can search for the axion with a Primakov process. So the hieroscope is a microwave cavity with a strong magnetic field. So thanks to the strong magnetic field, the axion or dark matter axion can convert into the microwave. And then we, when we uh, measure this uh, power of the microwave, we may get a, a sharp peak in the uh, power spectrum at a frequency corresponding to the axion mass. 
So by changing the horizontal frequency, we can search for a different uh, mass region for the QCD axiom. So the right figure is a good summary plot for the uh, constraint on the axiom photon coupling as a function of the axial mass. So this yellow shaded region is motivated by the QCD axial model, which can solve the strong CP problem. The KSVZ axial model predicts the upper red line, and the DFSC axial model predicts this lower red line. And in more generic class of the QCD axial model, or the axial photon coupling, uh, may be around this yellow shaded region. And these green shaded regions are ex excluded by halo scope action searches. And actually, the leftmost one is, ex uh, is the result by the ADMX experiment. So only the ADMX experiment uh, has been excluded to the DFSC axial model around this region. So in this region, the axial mass is about 2.66 to the 3.3 micro electron volt. And uh, uh, there, is, there are also other experiments, uh, Haystack and CAP, that has been already searched for uh, this variable parameter region. So this is the status. Uh, uh, so this is the result for the ADMX at the, in the last year, and they will uh, be expected to search for this parameter region. And interestingly, uh, this region is predicted by this recent state, state of the art numerical simulation for the post inflationary Pechenko asymmetry breaking scenario. So this prediction is included in the ADMX future sensitivity. So although this is not uh, uh, conclusive, so this uh, result is still under debate, but uh, it is interesting to note that the ADMX can uh, cover this parameter region in the near future. And conservatively, we may we may uh, we should search for this region for the post inflationary pitch uh, breaking scenario. <clears throat> and also, the ADMX uh, uh, experiment will cover uh, this parameter region, which is uh, also uh, interesting for the pre inflationary pitch queen symmetry breaking scenario. Okay, so this is the present status of the uh, QCD axiom. <clears throat> But uh, so in that case, we are interested only this region or around this region because the axial mass is related to the uh, de axion decay constant. But one can think about the uh, more general class of axion-like particles. In that case, the axial mass and uh, its decay constants are free parameters and are independent with each other. So uh, all other parameter regions are also interesting in that sense. So next, uh, let me move on to the uh, ALP or action-like particle dark matter scenario. So we can consider a more general class of action-like particles or ALPs, in which case these uh, parameters are independent. So there, the other experiments are, are, uh, can search for these uh, kind of particles. And uh, let me focus on three of them here, which are important to understand that xenon wanton excess recently reported. So let me start on this uh, constraint by white dwarfs. So the white dwarfs are well-known objects. Actually, we can calculate how they cool down. Well, we can calculate its luminosity function. So this is a figure for their uh, luminosity function. The black dot represents the observed luminosity function for the dwar white dwarfs. And this black line is the standard model prediction without axions. So, but if there is an axion or axion-like particle in the theory, and if it interacts with electrons, then they can be produced inside the white dwarfs. And then the white dwarfs cool more rapidly by emitting ALPs or axions. So if the axion electron coupling is about two times 10 to minus 13, the prediction of the luminosity function is becomes different in this way. So the prediction is modified as a middle line here. And if the coupling is twice larger, the prediction is given by this red line, the lower line here. 
So since the standard model prediction is more or less in agreement with the observation, we can put a constraint on the axion electron coupling by this luminosity function. So according to this analysis, this blue shaded region is excluded by the uh, cooling argument. But here, you can see that there is a small discrepancy between the standard model prediction and the observed luminosity function. So this is known as the uh, white dwarf luminosity, uh, sorry, this is known as the white dwarf cooling anomaly. And actually we can explain this anomaly if there is a non-zero coupling between the axion and electrons. So this red shaded region is known as the white dwarf hint, which is preferred to explain the cooling anomaly here. So now uh, let me move on to the dark matter direct detection experiments, such as a Zeno one ton. <clears throat> so Zeno one ton can search for axions because the axions are LPs, because LP can be absorbed by uh, electrons and electron can be uh, detected in, uh, by the uh, photomultiplier tubes. So and, uh, uh, interestingly, the Zeno one ton correlation reported excess electronic recall events around the KEV region. And it may be explained by the absorption of axion-like particles. Okay. So the, this axion-like particle may be generated from the sun or they may come from our dark matter halo. So suppose that they are generated inside the sun in this way, then this is the uh, result. So this blue-shaded region is favored to explain the xenon one ton excess. Here, the vertical axis is the axion photon coupling, and the horizontal axis is the axion uh, electron coupling. So, if the axion photon coupling is not that large, then we should look at this region. And then the axion electron coupling should be as large as 3 times 10 to minus 12. But this is not consistent with the white dwarf cooling argument. In the previous slide, we have a upper bound around a few times 10 to the minus 13, which is a one order magnitude smaller than uh, this one. Okay. So the stellar cooling constraints exclude the possibility that the ALPs are produced inside the sun. Okay. But one can think about a case where the ALP or axion comes from our dark matter halo. So in this case, we don't need to generate ALPs uh, somewhere because there is, there is an ALP in the dark matter halo. So as a result, uh, we, we need a smaller, relatively smaller axion electron coupling to explain the xenon one ton data. So the xenon one ton data can be explained when the ax uh, axion electron coupling is about uh, 10 to minus 13. Also, okay. And actually the uh, xenon one to data can be well fitted by these uh, scenarios. So this is also an interesting scenario. And uh, this signal is also consistent with the stellar cooling constraint. Okay. So in this case, the axion decay constant is 10 to 10 GeV. <clears throat> but we should check we should also check if this scenario is consistent with other constraint, particularly on the axion photon coupling. So even if this is consistent with the stellar cooling constraint, we should check if this is consistent with other uh, uh, constraints. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> so for that purpose, we should uh, uh, go back to this uh, constraint on the axion photon coupling. And we are interested in the case where the axial mass is around the KEV to expand the xenon uh, one to excess. But in this region, we have a stringent constraint by the uh, X-ray observations. This is because the axion in this parameter region has a sizable or, or decay rate. And if the axion or LP decays into two photons, we can observe the, uh, the, those photon signals by uh, some telescopes. And if the axial mass is about a KEV, uh, these are the X-ray. So we have, we can have a, a, 
strong constraint by the X-ray telescopes. And uh, <clears throat> since there is a stringent constraint on the upper bound on the X-ray luminosity, we have a very stringent constraint on the axion photon coupling, which determine the axion uh, lifetime. So <clears throat> according to the Zeno 1 to data, the decay constant should be over 10 to 10 GV. And in that case, if there is a electromagnetic anomaly, the axion photon coupling is around here, which is not consistent with the uh, X-ray observations. So this scenario is excluded, but one can think about the uh, model without electromagnetic anomaly. So if you consider the anomaly-free LP model, the axion photon coupling comes only from a, a threshold collection of the electron and the resulting axon photon coupling can be as small as 10 to 17, 10 to the minus 17 GeV inverse, which is consistent with the X-ray bound. And let me emphasize that this is not a fine tuning. So the electromagnetic anomaly is determined by the pitch queen charges of the standard low fermions, which is a kind of integer. So the integer may be zero. So this is not a, a something like a fine tuning. So this is a kind of a, a, a model dependent parameter. <clears throat> so uh, uh, in summary, the anomaly free ALP model can be consistent with the X-ray constraint, even for the case where the decay constant is 10 to 10 GB. So this is a good summary plot for the anomaly free ALP model for the KEV region. So this region is favored to explain the xenon one tone excess data. And actually this region is consistent with the white dwarf uh, cooling argument and the X-ray constraint. And this blue dash, oh, sorry. So this blue dashed line is a future sensitivity by the Athena uh, X-ray satellite. Unfortunately, this region cannot be tested by the Athena experiment, but it is interesting to note that it is, this sensitivity is close to this uh, prediction. Okay. And in this rightly shaded region, we can explain the dark matter abundance by the misalignment mechanism without fine tuning. So the ALP dark matter abundance can be naturally explained by the misalignment mechanism in this case, and can also explain the xenon one data here. <clears throat> but if the ALP dark matter density is equal to the total dark matter density, we cannot explain the white dwarf cooling anomaly. So in this red shaded region, there we can explain the white dwarf cooling anomaly, but it requires a, a slightly stronger action electron coupling. So we cannot explain uh, both uh, anomalies or signals simultaneously in this case. But one can think about the case where the LP constitutes a small fraction of dark matter. For example, uh, when the LP abundance is about 7% uh, of the dark matter density, then we need a relatively larger axion electron coupling to explain the xenon one tone excess data. Then in this case, we can also explain the white dwarf cooling anomaly simultaneously. And also we can also explain the uh, uh, dark matter abundance by this misalignment mechanism without fine tuning. <clears throat> so this is a very simple and uh, interesting scenario to explain the uh, xenon one tone excess data. So, uh, okay, let me summarize my talk. <clears throat> So in the first part of my talk, uh, uh, I overview the uh, I gave an overview to the QCD axial model. So although this is not conclusive, but uh, according to the state of the art numerical simulation, the post inflationary petrochemical symmetry breaking scenario of QCD axion would be tested by ADMX in a few years. So this is uh, uh, interesting and promising. And in the second part of my talk, I explained that the xenon one to excess data can be explained by anomaly free LP dark matter. And this uh, abundance can be also explained by a misalignment mechanism without fine tuning. And interestingly, if the LP 
uh, energy density is about uh, a few times the total dark matter density. Then we can also explain the stellar cooling anomalies as well as the xenon anton X data simultaneously. And uh, let me note that this is rather a natural in the context of the axivars. <clears throat> so the, a large number of ALPs are predicted in the low energy effective field theory of string theory, and some of the ALPs could be dark matter. So it means that it is reasonable to say that each of ALPs constitutes only a small fraction of dark matter. And one of them is a very ALP that explains these axis and uh, anomalies. So in that case, this is a kind of a rather natural scenario in the context of axivars. So that's it. Thank you very much.